Hey guys, what's going on? So I'm gonna show you how to uh, increase or decrease the output of your eBay style green laser pointer. This works on the JD850, the JD851. The 301 and 303 I'm not 100% sure about. I haven't really taken mine apart to see what's really inside of it, but I have taken this one apart in many, many of the JD850, so I do know how it works. Now this, is a, this does not work, this does not work on the red laser pointer, so don't try it. If you've got a red laser pointer, yeah, I guess you can take it apart if you want, but there is no potentiometer in there, so you can't really adjust this. This is a fixed current driver in here, so can't really adjust Now, that. one thing to remember, there are a lot of these videos on YouTube. There are so many of them. There's a lot of important steps that you have to go by, otherwise you'll easily fry this thing. Now, remember that these laser pointers were never designed to hit 150, 170, you know, 200 milliwatts. They were not designed to go that high. Most of the ones you buy are advertised as 40 to 50 milliwatts. If you want to bump it up to 100 or 105, that's fine. I've done it to pretty much all of mine and have no issues. Uh, I've had no issues whatsoever, but I was very careful about how I did it, and I'm gonna show you all exactly how to do it too. If you want to overdrive this thing and hit 150 to 170 milliwatts, then feel free to do that, but be prepared that the IR diode in there, and the crystals for that matter, can easily be burned out and destroyed. Now, pretty much all of these have a little foam insert inside here, but I took mine out. I imagine that foam is just to keep it from shorting out, but the inside of this is anodized, so it doesn't matter. Now that spring is really bent, as you can see it. Now I didn't do that, it came like that. It's actually been soldered in that position, so, unless you want to unsolder it or desolder it and move it around, uh, you can do that. But for some reason, my spring was completely bent really bad. Bad, I can't speak. The spring itself isn't bent, it's just the soldering contact point is cockeyed, so that's what's making it uh, you know, like that. I took my foam out because it looked kind of dumb. Take it apart. Like I said, be very careful about doing this. Now try to stay grounded or try to not move if you're sitting on a carpet or something like that uh, because it's pretty obvious these are very susceptible to electrostatic discharge as you guys may know that. So as you guys can see this horrible soldering contact point you can see that the spring is not bent, it's just been soldered in that position for some reason. Whoa! Now this one has a little piece on there like that. I want to unscrew that very carefully. And push it through. Here's the module. Now you want to take this piece off very carefully. Very carefully. And the reason I say carefully, it's not that you have to be really careful. The reason I say be very careful is because since these things are really cheap laser pointers, the soldering points on the diode itself are probably not going to be that good, so it'd be very easy to break it off. I'm actually surprised that mine hasn't broken, but these seem to be pretty well, I guess, as you guys can tell. And there's the driver. You have the potentiometer, and you have this switch right here, which is interesting, which makes me think that this was supposed to go into a pin host or was designed for a pin host at one point, uh, but the switch has been bypassed, so... Now on most of the laser pointers that I've modded, I've noticed that counterclockwise is up and clockwise is down. So I don't know if they're all like that, but on my past three models of laser pointers, they've all been that way. And so just remember, probably a majority of them, counterclockwise is up and clockwise is down. So I have mine set to about 100 milliwatts, and I of course don't have any way of testing the current. All I'm doing is basing it off of visuals on how bright I remember it being or how bright it is. Sometimes you can look at a dot and you can kind of tell that it's really, really bright. I mean, let's say you have a 100 milliwatt and a 150 milliwatt 532. It's obvious that the 150 uh, milliwatt is gonna be brighter. It's 50% brighter. Now that's not always the case. You can't really go off that. So I, since I don't have a multimeter, the best way that I can test it is using my LPM. Uh, when I remember, well, when I got this thing, it was sitting at about 69 milliwatts, basically 65 to 69, and I wanted 100 milliwatts. So I took it apart ramped it up just a tiny bit, quickly figured out that you can't move the potentiometer very much, and I easily hit 100 milliwatts, and it's, it pretty much stays steady at 100 milliwatts. So you have to use a screwdriver. Now this is kind of difficult for me because this screwdriver is a little bit too small. I'm really afraid this thing's gonna break off. Only because I messed with it so much. Well, I'll show you guys really quick. Let me move the camera. All right, now remember that most of these are case positive, so I do have a magnet on the back of the negative. We're gonna click that to it. Run a wire through the positive on the battery. 
And then remember not to touch the spring because it can easily short out. So that's probably about 60 milliwatts. I did turn it down um, earlier just to, well, I made a video earlier, but I didn't like it. So, all right, so we're gonna take the potentiometer and the potentiometer is pretty much just a system to regulate current or a, basically regulates the current on the driver. Now we're gonna go, we're gonna go counterclockwise. All right, so I'm pressing up the, basically pressing up against the back of it with the same force that I'm pressing forward with the screwdriver because I don't want to snap the dry uh, the uh, contact points. All right, so I went counterclockwise at least 30% turn, which basically means it's probably really low. If not, probably can't even see it at all since it is so low. So it's still pretty bright. Now counterclockwise, I'm sorry, was down or was up. I, I apologize for that. Okay, so we're going to go clockwise now. Now I went pretty much half a turn. I probably shouldn't have done that. Uh, now that I've done that, a half a turn, it's probably not going to illuminate at all. Maybe. Okay, so it is. It is pretty much. You know, I'm trying to turn it down so I can show you all. So we're going to try to turn it down as low as it'll go. Now we are going counterclockwise. Oh, the screwdriver's not working because it's too small. All right, so now it's probably not even going to work or be on since I did turn it so much. That was a half a turn again. And like I said, don't turn it too much. There, now see I've turned it too much and it's not working. So it's pretty much all the way down. It's below its threshold, of course, so. So we'll turn it up just a little bit by going counterclockwise. I really need to get a screwdriver that actually works. All right. Now I'm using a magnet uh, only because it's going to stick to the connector. All right, so it's back on. Now I don't want to turn it up too much because like I said, I don't want to overdrive it, but that's basically how you do it. It's pretty simple. And if you break it, it's really basically just a learning uh, experience to do something like this. Just don't get cocky and try to turn it all the way up because <laughs> you'll easily blow it up. Um, but that's basically how you do it. And once you have it um, to the desired output, I would recommend not messing with the potentiometer uh, unless you want it just a tad brighter than maybe counterclockwise about 10 to 15% of a turn. Uh, and then you can turn it up. Uh, that's, it'll probably go up from there. And then I wouldn't mess with it anymore. I wouldn't keep turning it up and down because you have no way of knowing exactly where it's at. Uh, and you can easily destroy it. Um, but if you got like, you know, five or six or seven of these things laying around, then I guess that's fine. It doesn't really matter, um, you know, what you do. Uh, but that's, that's pretty much how you do it. It's pretty simple. So like I said, um, so really the only reason I made this video is because somebody asked me, I've actually gotten several people on my, uh, my channel that have asked me how to adjust the output or make it brighter. And it's pretty simple. I mean, most laser enthusiasts, if not, well, actually all of them uh, knew that you could do this, but a lot of people don't do it because it's very risky. Um, but the fact that these things don't cost a whole lot is why it's just not that big of a deal, I guess. I wouldn't go uh, taking your Dragon Lasers, you know, 100 milliwatts Spartan and trying to adjust it. Uh, it's a 150, you know, $200 laser. You don't want to do that. Uh, but these ones, it's easily, um, it can be easily be done. That's how you do it, guys. So thanks for watching.